you love him this morning. Oh, Heavenly Father, we worship you today. God, we claim you and the victory of who you are in our lives. Oh, Lord, find us faithful in all that you call us to do. Now, Heavenly Father, we continue in this atmosphere of worship and bringing glory and honor to who you are. God, with grateful hearts, with thanksgiving upon our lips, we worship you. We love you, Lord. Oh, one more time, just give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this house. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, praise and worship team. I invite you to be seated. Today is our third Sunday, and on the third weekend, we receive missions offerings, so I'm going to invite the ushers to come, and as they are coming, I want to give you a little update. I was contacted by Jim and Renee Larson uh, over the well project. Uh, they have put all the monies together, and it costs around $30,000. We were able to give uh, over 7300 and some odd number because of what you gave. Amen? Amen. And we're a part of that, and they've, uh, they will be here in September of this year uh, to share with you what's going on there in the DR Dominican Republic and what all is taking place, uh, but you have your hand into bringing fresh water into a community, and uh, God's faithful, amen? amen. And uh, we support some other groups, Youth for Christ, a few other missionaries that are out of the country, and we contribute to our local right here where we're at. So this morning, when you give, you know that you give to a ministry, not just to the church. You're giving to ministry, to missions work that takes place outside of our four walls. Amen? Amen. The other thing I want to remind you, because I've had people come and ask me, on the backboard is a way for us to raise the funds for our, not replacement, replacement of our blacktop is about $40,000. That's a chunk of change. We're looking to fix our blacktop and renew it. Now, if somebody wants to write a check for $40,000, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but we all have a part back there on that board. What you do is you take a disc from $1 up to, I believe, the $100. There are several that are missing already. You take and you put that in to an offering envelope. Uh, if you're writing a check, you'll get credit automatically. If you're putting in cash, you want credit for that. Please put your name on it. But put the disc in with the amount of money that you're giving, what's on the disc, and everybody can participate all the way from $1 to $100. And it's geared to raise over $5,000. Amen? Amen? And God's faithful. So, Heavenly Father, today we are thankful for what you have done in this house already. In the lives of so many people, God, you have reached down and you've touched them. God, in this offering, Lord, we, we may not travel overseas. We may not be able to get out and go to the places around this nation to do ministry. God, we are a part of it, Lord, and it's because of your blessing upon our life. God, I ask that you continue to bless those that have hearts to give. 
God, when you place it upon our heart, let us not shy away from what you're calling us to do. And Lord, we ask that your blessing be upon it, that it will be multiplied for ministry's sake. In Jesus' name, amen. As they pass by, I'm going to give you a few announcements. Uh, this coming Saturday will be our first outdoor concert. And Ryan and Stacy Blackburn is coming to do our outdoor concert on Saturday. And they will also be in-house on Sunday morning to lead us in worship. So I encourage you all to come and to be blessed by their ministry. We're definitely blessed by our worship team that we have here. Uh, but it also gives them an opportunity to set and to worship. Uh, some of the team members may be requested to participate. But we know that uh, our concerts outside draws attention as people go by. How many want to draw some attention to who God is? Not just to the church, but to who God is. So I encourage you to come. Uh, Titus together, the ladies' ministry will be selling food, so come hungry. They're raising funds for their annual fall retreat. The coffee house will be open to sell all the summertime drinks that you can uh, handle to drink. And ladies... The retreat, there's only a few spots left. If you have not signed up, they need you to sign up. Give them the $50 uh, non-refundable deposit. Uh, they, and like I said, they only have a few spots left. And then Soul Fire. Soul Fire has been doing some things to raise some funds. And, and they're doing some remodels downstairs for, for the youth and the children's department. And, and it's, uh, you know, we all use the basement. Amen. But they're needing some help. They are going to uh, Buttermilk Park on Wednesday, August the 3rd. And they are going to be hosting a fundraiser there because there's an outdoor concert on that Wednesday night. And they're expecting 800 or more to show up. And our youth department is doing the concessions. Grilling burgers, hot dogs. Can I throw out the word whatnot? I'm not for sure what all they're going to do, but they're requesting anybody that is willing to make some home-baked goods and uh, provide that, and you can make arrangements with Billy Joe to bring it in prior to that, uh, that Monday, Tuesday, or even that Wednesday. Help them be uh, able to do well at this fundraiser. This past weekend... Friday they left, they went to Chicago as, as a youth group for some connection. After service today, they are going to get into the church van and go up towards Appleton to have a further connection with the youth that have been participating. Always be in prayer about our youth. I've asked you to pray about the house next door, about our church. We need prayer over our finances. We need prayer over our ministries Last week, we were honored with Sammy Joe bringing up a handful of littles. Well, it was more than a handful. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. They're your kids. Uh, <clears throat> they're more than a handful. Everybody say amen. <coughs> and she asked for volunteers, workers. Our children need and they deserve our care for them. Amen? So see Sammy Joe. Sammy Joe, stand up, if you will. You love that. I didn't ask her to wave at you, but that was cool that you actually knew that she stood up and waved. So turn your Bibles with me into the book of Joshua. It's the third chapter in verse 5, and today I want to talk to you about being bold. Being bold in everything that God is calling you to do. And in front of you it says... Bold, choosing faith over fear. A couple of weeks back, I established the fact that fear is either you face everything and rise or you run. So let us have faith to become bold in the name of the Lord to go outside and have an impact on the world that we live. Pastor Luke said, you know, there are some of us that are just very thankful that God forgave us over our past. 
See, what I want to remind you this morning is that God Himself being alongside of you, you can conquer the things in this world. You can conquer the things within your own life. And you can never walk away from the promises of God that He said that He would love you, that, that He gave His only begotten Son. And, and I remind you here today, those that are watching, that God has a plan for you. And that plan sometimes becomes more than what more than what we can understand first. And in our own way of thinking, more than we can handle. But God has you in the midst of everything. So it says in Joshua chapter 3, verse 5, And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. This is what is being said by God through Joshua to the people, the children of Israel. They're about to walk over with the Ark of the Covenant in front of them. They're about to walk through the Jordan River on dry ground to what has been said to them as a promise. Promise. How many of you have received the promises of God? Put your hand up. Don't be quick to drop it. That God has a promise for you. Now with your hands up, has God fulfilled all those promises? If so, leave your hand up. I have to put my hand down because there's promises that I still have not seen yet. It doesn't mean they're not coming. It's just not in my timing. Last night, one of the young men, and I, I know he's here. I've seen him walking around. He says, can you make a burrito so hot that you can't eat it? Now, with a grin on your face, how many ever threw a burrito in the microwave and overheated it, and you didn't think anything, and you bit it, and all the lava... All the beans and cheese that just erupted in your mouth has scalded it. Can you make a burrito so hot that you can't eat it? Is there anything impossible for God? Absolutely not. See, us being bold is where we come into the favor of God. See, it's not about who we are. It's about to whom we are belong. I have the Lord's name upon me. I have been bought with a price and, and with this uh, witness that I'm supposed to be and all these factors that come into my life, God is calling me to a place that is unobtainable under my own strength. So we ask God into our lives and Joshua is saying, you go and you sanctify yourself. Another translation calls it to consecrate. Those two words mean the very same thing. It's to set yourself apart and to make yourself holy. W-H-O-L-L-Y. We have to give ourselves. Holy. Nothing holding back. We give everything of who we are that we become holy. H-O-L-Y. Now let me step out on a very flimsy branch. Holiness is not how we dress. Holiness is who we are in Christ. And we present ourselves in such a way that we're attempting and pursuing who God is. See, I haven't got to where I need to be. But I'm a whole lot further than where I was. And so my purpose and the intentionality of pursuing who God is has to be in the forefront of our minds, in the forefronts of our hearts. See, if we're going to be bold to be a witness, and that's a series that I'm starting today, Boldness to Witness. Growing up, I remember a time that we had... In our school, 
Bible clubs. Anybody remember being in a Bible club at school? You got together, you did studies, you prayed for one another. We would go through and, and we would leave these little cards, which is, was so cool, we thought. These little cards on the, on the teacher's desk in every room and, and told them we were praying for them. And then we saw the abrupt ending because one teacher didn't believe in God. How dare you pray for us? How dare you? And I remember being called in to the principal's office, and the principal said, before he, the teacher ever showed up, he says, I have to do this because of the teacher's union. But I'm going to ask you, will you please keep praying? And we went through the little scripted ordeal, and we continued to pray. We just didn't leave a note where he could see it on his desk anymore. We just placed it somewhere in the room. See, the boldness to be a witness comes from an understanding that God has this plan for us. You and I, to be a bold witness for who Christ is, we just have to do this simple act. You don't have to have training. You don't have to go to school. You don't have to come and and participate in a class that someone teaches to you. It's about life evangelism. Just living life. Living life in such a way that everyone that meets you knows that there's something different about you. Not in a weird way, not in a fanatical way, but, but there's something about you that draws them to be a place in your life that you have the ability to have an impact. So what is this thing that we can do to have an impact? There's different ways. We know that we were called to this. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8, there's going to be a picture that comes on the screen in front of you. Be my witness. Broke down a little differently than what the scripture says, but it's good for you to have a visual this morning. Be a witness. Where? Right here in Jerusalem. Where do you start to be a witness? Right here in your homes. Right here where you do business. Right here where you work. Wherever you call your place of residence, there is people. Some of you are blessed that your closest neighbor's a mile away. Others of us are blessed that we have neighbors right beside us. Well, we start right where we're at, and we start to venture out. We establish ourselves in Samaria and beyond. Today, we're participated in a missions offering, and we'll be able to go further than what any of you have imagined that we can go into someone's life. But when we start looking at, at what God has for them, this, this life evangelism is a day-by-day -day thing. It has to take place in your life every day. It just isn't a few hours on a weekend that you come together and, and you get encouraged and you get established within your spirit about the plan that God has for you. It's about living life. In Acts chapter 2, verses 46 through 47, 46 and 47, it says, So, so continually daily with one accord in the temple... And breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. See, we have the, the blessing of being a community of believers right here in this house. But we also have to realize that each one of us has a connection to the world. Now, we're just passing through this world. This world is not our home. So you have to realize that you are on your journey to the place that God said would be our final destination where we would spend eternity, and that's heaven. But you don't have to come into this mindset that you have to associate and be found a part of this world. Now let me step over just a little bit. 
if you cannot shine for the glory of God through your talk and through your walk, I encourage you to self-evaluate. Not what a preacher stands up and preaches at you. Is there things within your life that is keeping people at a distance from a relationship with God? See, we can talk about God. Just like you and I can talk about some famous actor, someone that's famous. But until we have a relationship with that individual, until we have a true relationship with God our Father, what we repeat is just hearsay. But when we have a true relationship, we step over into the place that we can be called a witness. I can tell you what God has done in my life. I can tell you what God is doing in my life. I can tell you the great miracles that God has accomplished. I can tell you by the experience of what God is doing. You have the very same ability. You can go into this world and you can try to take back everything the enemy has stolen. Your family. Your friends. You know, we're living in a, a chaotic, upset, turned over world that Satan is just has to be rolling around on the ground laughing. Because of all the all the confusion, all the stuff. Church, can I remind you that we are too blessed to call ourselves stressed? That God has given us the joy of who He is in the strength of who He is in our life, the joy of the Lord. Oh, we can all have bad days. If you haven't experienced one yet today, tomorrow's coming. But through the joy of the Lord, that relationship. And if I walked out, and I've said this before from up here in the front, if I walked out and stuck a microphone in your mouth and asked you this one question, has God ever let you down? The resounding answer would be no. We could put the but, B-U-T, in a comma and say, but... It was a few things I wanted he didn't fulfill. But how many know fathers knows best? God has a plan. And we go back to such scriptures, Jeremiah 29 and 11, that we know he has a plan for us. And see, the prosperity of that word in that scripture is not just simply as the world sees prosperity. God knows what prospers us. And that's a real relationship with him. See, it's only by God's power and His grace that we can go into the world and make a difference. In Acts chapter 4, verses 31 through 33, I asked several weeks that you would go and read that because God moved and I wasn't able uh, to finish what He had laid upon my heart to preach. But it says, and when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. The power of God showed up. And it goes on, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. The very first reason why we have received the baptism and the power of the Holy Spirit in our life is to be a witness that we go and proclaim in the boldness of the power and the anointing of a Holy God within us, that Holy Ghost that we experience in our lives. And some of you might be sitting there thinking, well, Pastor, what in the world are you talking about? Well, the Holy Spirit is that little thing within you that unctions you along, <laughs> that makes you take a left turn instead of a right turn. You hear the voice of God, you study the Word of God, you, you read and take of the Word of God, and, and the God starts to bring it, and the Holy Spirit brings that passage of Scripture back into your memory that you can give and focus. 
You know, the very first sign is, is the utterance of other tongues, unknown tongues. Why? Because that day they fell out of the room that they called the upper room, the day of Pentecost. And when they fell out and they come down the stairs, they were preaching and teaching the word of God in their own language. And you know what they were preaching and teaching? <laughs> what they witnessed. They didn't stand up in, a, in front of a podium and had notes laying in front of them. No, they preached from their heart. They express, you got, you got to know the God that just, that just touched me. And if you recall that day, 3,000 souls came to know who Christ was. In the book of Joel, Peter stood and he quoted that, that your sons and your daughters will prophesy. And we got all caught up on that word prophesy. Do you know what that means? Telling of what God will do. A prophetic word, not making light of it at all. You know what a prophetic word for us here today is? If we align ourselves with God, we'll do miracles because of who He is. Why? Because the promises of God for when I came five and a half years ago has still not been fulfilled. You can look around and you can tell we have room for growth. You know why? Because he's raising up a people right now. You sitting here, he's raising you up to go out and to be a witness of who he is. He says, I stand here. I'm a firm believer that our greatest days are in front of us that our greatest days are in front of us, that people's lives will change and change forever. So I don't want you to put your hand up. I took my glasses off where I can't see everybody's face. I'm going to go back and finish reading that scripture. Just give me a moment. Now don't put your hands up. I want you to just to self-evaluate. When you've come into the house of God and you've had a wonderful, powerful service and you receive something from God, your head, thank you, <laughs> you can flip that switch, that light come back on. Sorry, I didn't mean to draw it. Don't look at the guy behind the curtain over there. <clears throat> After you walked out of here, how many of you fell prey to the enemy's attack? That all, and, and I don't say it as a shock, all hell broke loose in your life. You come through and you have this powerful, powerful move of God and you receive something from God and the enemy's standing at the door seeing if he can steal it from you, if he can take it from you. And we fall prey to that. And church, we can't allow that to happen to our fellow brothers and sisters anymore. So this life evangelism that I'm talking about comes to a place of understanding in verse 32. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Paul puts it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Read that for yourself. Put yourself in the midst of this. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace towards me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. See, the grace of God will bring us to a place that brings boldness into our lives. It'll bring unity in our lives. It'll bring results in our life. And some of you, some days you want to have a Billy Graham experience. Where a thousand people will walk to the altar and give their heart to the Lord, and that's an amazing thing. But what God has called you and I to do is to have a garden mentality. 
a garden mentality. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul goes, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Verse 7, so then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one. It means that we are all witnesses. Some will plant, some will come along with their witness and they will water. Someone else will plant and someone else will come along and water. It's what we do in this garden of life that, that brings forth the ability for God to give the increase. It's not said here, and, and I'm not adding anything to the scriptures, but how many of you know if you want your garden to grow, you've got to keep the weeds out? Ooh, don't shout me down. Don't say amen on that one. You've got to keep the weeds out of your life. You've got to literally get out front of our home. We put in this little triangle thing of bricks, and, and we got dirt. And, and I guess the dirt that we got was filled with so much weeds and trash <laughs> of, of different plants. My wife and I gave up. We pulled everything of any kind of promise out of it. And sometime between now and next spring, I don't know when I'm going to get it done, we're going to go out there and we're going to kill it all, till it all up, add about 400 pounds to sand to the mess, and see if we can get something to grow besides wide leaf weeds. <laughs> but some of us, it's real easy in our life because my wife made this suggestion. Why don't we just go out there and cover it with plastic and just put mulch on top of it? <laughs> Somebody enjoyed that. But how many of you know that weeds in our life will overtake? And if you don't stay tending to the weeds that the enemy sows amongst all the plans and the purposes of who you are, that the weeds of life will overtake you. And God doesn't want that. We have to live a separated life. We have to find our focus to be upon God. And this scripture, and I'm going to close so someone can come and give me some land in the plain music here. And uh, that means I'm going to close and I really need somebody to play the piano to help me. 1 Timothy chapter 6 with verse 11. It'll come on the screens in front of you, but I want you to hear what the word of the Lord says. But you, O oh man of God. Did you read that with me? You, O oh man of God. He's talking about you and I. The word man is an inclusive to all of who we are. It says, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, Love, patience, and gentleness. Paul's writing this to his prodigy, Timothy, a young man that is following in ministry. And in verse 12, he says this, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession and the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep this commandment and without spot, blameless unto our Lord Jesus Christ appearing. This last slide that's coming up. It talks about 
flee, follow, fight, and faithful. These four words are four marks that you can establish in your life. If you're pursuing God, what of this world are you fleeing? What are you running from? See, I don't want to be so close to sin that I fall into it. I'm going to stay as far away from it as I can. And each and every one of us fights a battle of sin within our life. We keep it under the blood. We pray about it before our feet ever hit the floor. We find ourselves succumbing to who the Spirit of the Lord is in our life. And we just simply call out, God, today I need help. So what you flee from is a mark. If you don't want to put distance between you and the fire... Understand, you will one day be consumed. The next one is what you follow after. What do you pursue in your life? Do you want to be men and women that are closer to God? That when people look at you, they say, there's something different. And again, it wasn't how we dressed 30 years ago that made us Pentecostal individuals. It was the action within us. And, and, and I shared with, with a group of people over the weekend about there was situations to where they would present themselves holy, but after service on a Sunday night, they would leave the church parking lot, drive around to a back alley and spend the night with a married man. See, it's not about how we present ourselves that makes us holy. It's about what is present in our lives that make us holy. And what do you fight for? Do you fight for what is right before God? Do you fight for your family? Pastor, how do we fight? It's not with flesh and bone that we fight against. We have to learn to fight in the spiritual realm. We don't wrestle against flesh and bone. We have to fight the good fight upon our knees, within our hearts, within our minds. Church, I'm, I'm looking at, a, at you, knowing that God's going to raise you up and you're going to have a mighty impact in the lives of people that you see every day. I think it's time for us to make a venture into the enemy's camp. We used to sing about that and take back what he has stolen from us. Let me take that one step further. Everybody everybody got good shoes on? I don't want to step on anybody's toes. We need to fight for what we gave to the enemy. We got to fight for what we gave to take it back, to proclaim over our houses, our homes, our workplaces. The difference it will make and the last one is, what are you faithful to? It's summertime. It's not about just being faithful to the attendance of a church. That's not even what I'm saying. What are you faithful to? Are you faithful to the cause of prayer? Are you faithful to help establish and continue in ministry? Are you faithful to pray without ceasing for your family, your friends, your coworkers? Are you faithful to be positive that God's got a purpose and a plan? Oh my, how many times we get beat up because we don't think we have purpose. See, it was established. God loves us. Through the worship that we had today, God loves us and we love Him. So I'm going to ask you to stand. I have one more point, and I'm not going to read the scripture. I'm going to give you the scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6, 7, and 8. We need to learn to be generous, not just through finances. 
That scripture says, He who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Some of the things I'm referring to this morning is friendships, connections. Don't miss out on opportunities to know the people that you stand beside and sit beside within this congregation. Allow yourself the richness of what God wants for us by connection to God's faithful. God's very faithful. So my prayer is that we have boldness to be a witness. So bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, this day, we are thankful that we have you. Now, God, within us, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would rise up and make us have the boldness to be everything that you called us to be. As you proclaim to those that, that were there on the hillside before you ascended to the Father, God, you gave a commission. God, that we would go. Lord, that commission is still here today. That we would go. That we would be a witness unto you. That we would make disciples. That we would baptize in the name of your Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you pour down. And God, throughout this day and the rest of this week, God, that you put it into our hearts and our memories. That you're counting on us. That you're counting on us to do what you call us to do as individuals and as a congregation. We give you praise in this, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Remember, this Saturday, our first outdoor concert. Remember on Wednesday this week, Bible study here in the house along with prayer and the youth. But God bless each and every one of you.